Look at that. Oh boy, here he comes. Meadow M. Oh, beautiful. Oh god, these are like young girls. Oh, yeah. Interesting design there for the head of state. Yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, it appears to be a bit of a take on, um, you know, the supreme leader. Not Kim Jong-un, uh, because, you know, the manga... Yeah, the manga came out long before that, I think. Not I think, I know. I'm pretty sure it came out long before that. So it's got to be Kim Jong-il. You know, <laughs> same type of outfit. That, you know, similar mustache. Kind of sounds like a bozo, you know? It's quite deliberate, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose they have to face Palm now, don't they? <laughs> Ooh. I like how he's so receptive of Nefropito now. There it is. There's our rare human. He craves so much. Whoa. Go on then, tell us. Ooh. Oh. Did you just have like a spike? He did. Oh. Oh my god, it's e even more like Cell. Ooh. Feral. Bloodthirsty. He's. Yeah, he certainly developed a taste for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even his build is kind of similar. And the shades. Uh, <laughs> uh. Interesting name choice. Masador Digo. Huh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Nepotism, right? That makes it really quite clear. Oh. Okay, Meruem. Soldiers. Huh. Oh my god, this guy is beyond goofy. Ah. Oh, kind of like a, perhaps like a puppet state? Yeah, those are like little girls, aren't they? Look at those eyes, man, piercing eyes. <laughs> Oh. Wow. Oh. Look at this. Perhaps the beating stages of the philosopher king, Meriam. Meruem. Pfft. How about that? Oh. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> yes. Great shot. Holy shit. How many of those gone dolls did she make? She even got the hair right. <laughs> yeah, he did make a promise. Pinky promise. Sealed with a kiss. Oh, my God. Mm, of course, Gon's immediately open to that. Oh, 
<laughs> of course, yeah. Oh, they meant a literal date. <laughs> oh boy, it's going there, folks. <laughs> yeah, he did. See, he's immediately open to making up for it. Atoning. Oh god. <laughs> I love that animation there. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look, it, listen, this is not a stable person. <laughs> ah, but it's still... It's an adult and it's a child. It's... Dicey. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Listen, it, it is funny. Let, it's inappropriate, of course, but you know, it's deliberately trying to be comedic about it as well. Yeah, the composure is impressive. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Ah, okay. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Tokyo Mirage? Mature fanatics, cougars. He's a grown up. <laughs> kind of on like a really long date. <laughs> and secured. This, this is it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then sugarcoat it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, boy. Yes! Look at you! Oh. I mean, he certainly strolls like a king. Oh, they don't even know it's like a... He does He does look quite fashionable, right? In that fit. <laughs> See, he's not He's not half-assing it. He's thoughtful. Wow, look at that. You know, I actually like Chitu. I've liked him since the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Little snack. Biteables. Hey. Magical bees. Right? You know, they, they've, they brought up the idea of magical beast before, right? Earlier in the series, I believe. Ah, okay. Are you? <laughs> That'd be oh beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God! Look at her. Oh, she was standing right there, hidden in plain sight. Fitting in. Oh. 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 
Stunner. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> There's other connotations as well. <laughs> oh, look at her. Beautiful. Beautiful. Listen, I know, I know it's it's creepy, it's strange, but I think there's a bit more nuance there. Right? This is wholesome. This part of it at least. <laughs> that kind of looks like Meduem's head. <laughs> oh, I love this arrangement of this score. Yeah, look at this. You know, he gone put in a lot of effort. He knows how to treat people. He has an understanding for, you know, the type of person. Or okay. That's, oh, look at this. Yeah, man, he's got like a spot picked out in everything. You know. A silent guardian. Yeah, see, Kill's got that concern as well. But surely Gon senses Killua's presence, right? So is it Chitu? Oh, I saw silhouettes. Oh no. Let me have one more look. Fuck, that looks like Ramo. It is, I see the little song. <laughs> yeah, it's him, I see the ears. Out of all of them, this is the one that comes across killed. Yeah. He's had a hate boner on for a long time. Oh god, this is him truly against the wall at this point. Yeah, this is it. The ultimate test. Okay, yeah, so this is it, right? This is really truly it, isn't it? Because, you know, at this point, the stakes are so damn high, right? Ramo is here to kill. And, you know, it... It's not even it's not even as if you know it's do or die for Killua, right? Because he's not even really thinking about that. He's thinking about gone, right? It's do or die for gone, his best friend, the you know, the one person, maybe not the one person, you know, uh let's kind of let's kind of track back a bit. One of the only few people that he has this unconditional loyalty towards, right? Love and loyalty. Let's all leave that out. Uh, and, you know, I, I kind of track back on it because, again, you know, there's always the unknown of that sibling, right? The silhouette shots, him holding that sibling's hand. Um, yeah, so, you know, there's certainly a relationship there, a good one at that, you know, a loving one, clearly. Uh, so, you know, you know kind of off topic, but yeah, you know, I hope I hope I get to see that at some point. You know, it's kind of getting there. I'm getting close to episode 100, but, you know, that being said, uh, even beyond episode uh, 100, there's still quite a bit quite a bit so you know chances are good i'll get that at some point uh but you know again at, in in the back of my mind i'm always kind of thinking about okay um you know given the fact that of course it's in, incomplete right um the anime the adaptation um yeah you know from time to time I, I do kind of think about oh okay you know i'm hoping for certain things but am i going to have enough time right is the enemy going to have enough time um or content, I suppose, because of course, you know, there's certainly a few things that I hope it can get to in those 148 episodes, right? Of course, you know, at the forefront is Gon's, um, you know, ultimate journey, essentially, right? Finding Jing. I think, I think, you know, I think that's probably a safe assumption that I'll probably get that, you know, near the conclusion uh, or at some point. But, you know, I'm guessing it's not going to be anytime soon because, again, I don't really expect Jing to come in. At this point, you know, you know, in the middle of the Chimera Anta arc, you know, maybe maybe at some point they could kind of, uh, you know, check in and maybe he finds out and, you know, maybe I'll get a bit of a take on, uh, you know, his thoughts or I'm sorry, maybe I'll get his take on the Chimera Ants, possibly, potentially, I don't know. 
But realistically, I'm not expecting much of Jing because, you know, I've barely seen uh, much of Jing anyways. And, you know, it doesn't really make that much sense at all, really, to bring him in into this arc. Um, but yeah, you know, there's a Jing aspect. There's, you know, the Oreo and Kropika, who I've barely seen, um, you know, recently, uh, that is. I mean, you know, I had a full arc that was essentially kind of dedicated to uh, Kropika, or at least Kropika played a, a major role, right? A lot of screen time in the in the York New City arc. Incredible arc, of course. But, you know, Leorio, on the other hand, he hasn't really had that much screen time. Um, so, you know, of course, I hope Leorio comes back in. There's a whole, you know, Phantom Troop angle. Um, though, you know, that being said, like I kind of speculated, there is a possibility now that they, they could they could come in. You know, many of them could kind of come in um, into this arc, actually. Uh, you know, again, you know, they don't have to be a part of this, but, you know, they could kind of come in separately because now, again, the Chimera Ants, as showcased in this episode, uh, are out, you know, out and about, right, in different places. Um, you know, I saw Chidu, uh, or Chitu. Uh, I saw, of course, Ramot. <laughs> you know, uh, imagine the chances, right? The the one or the two kids or the two people he wanted most are the ones he comes across, right? Or at least one of them. Uh, and Ramot is ready. He, he's essentially ready to just rip uh, Kilua to shreds. But let me kind of finish up my, you know, thoughts about the things I'm kind of expecting before the, the, the episodes run out, I suppose. Yeah, you know, the Phantom Troop angle. Beyond them actually playing a part in this arc in some capacity, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, Krollo and, you know, him kind of getting his Nen back, exercising, uh, you know, the hold that's over him, Um and, you know, then, of course, there's the there's a potential uh, Hisoka and Krolo fight. But, yeah, you know, going back to uh, the setup there um, and the test run, uh, you know, uh, Killua and Shu from a few episodes ago. It's it's really quite clever, isn't it? Um, you know, it did a lot of the lifting. So now us, the audience, knows of his struggles, right, during the fight itself, you know, against someone that is uh, quite a formidable opponent. And Ramot at this point, right? Nen being unlocked and everything, yeah, it's it's a it's a different it's a different ball game at this point for Kilua, right? It's not going to be the same. Hell, you know, even the first time it required Kilua and Gon to defeat him, right? And you know, once they kind of get the better of him, they really they put, they put a beating on him. And of course, you know, I remember that freak out, that that you know that voice acting performance as well. You know, Ramot, right? He, he said he'll come back for them, right? And even after that, in the aftermath of that, you know, he told Colt that, he, you know, he's going to do some, you know, disgusting things to them, right? Something along those lines. And this is it. This is his chance. Uh, and yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it's cause for concern, isn't it? Because, you know, uh, based on the, the Killua and shoot encounter, yeah, you know, it's not going to be easy. But again, you know, ultimately, the shoot encounter, it, it kind of had a safety net, right? There, it's not about gone or, you know, kind of, you know, protecting gone. Um, th again, the stakes are high, but not this high. Now, again, different ball game. You know, there it's kind of like, okay, you know, they failed. They didn't get to go to the NGL, right? And, you know, it, it's shoot. Shoot's not, shoot, shoot simply was not going to hurt uh, Killua uh, more than, more than needed, right? He just wanted to get the job done. But yeah, this is it. You know, this is a definitive encounter. There's no more safety net. You know, Killua is between a rock and a hard place. On one end, it's Gon's life in his hands, right? Kind of, kind of, you know, the palm could play a part here. Uh, and I'll give you my thoughts on that. Uh, and on the other end, he's got this internal programming that he's been fighting for years at this point. You know, Illumi's uh, stranglehold, his programming, uh, his manipulation, right? Um, that's going to kick in. It's inevitably going to kick in uh, as uh, the fight, you know, begins in the next episode. Uh, as Ramot approaches, it's going to happen, just like it happened against Shu, and again on many other occasions before that as well, right? Nobunaga as well, not too long ago. So before I get into a bit of speculation about some of the possibilities, and you know, one of those possibilities including Palm. So at the most basic level, uh, you know, Killua either beats him or he loses to him, to Ramot, 
right? And of course, in this case, losing to him means Kilwa dies, right? Um, see, the thing is, it's just one of those things, right? You know, you simply know that Kilua is not about to die here. Again, it's just exceedingly unlikely, isn't it? And then, of course, the other possibility of him actually, you know, finally breaking loose, breaking free, and, you know, besting Ramo in, in something that could potentially be an amazing moment, right? Of course, if he's able to kind of, you know, get over this speed bump, a massive speed bump at that, it'd be a massive moment, incredible moment for uh, this character arc, uh, for Kill. So yeah, you know, of course, either possibility um, can be interesting and exciting, right? Now, of course, you know, uh, I don't want to see Killua get beat up and lose, but you know, the thing is, I actually do believe that is a possibility here, right? Um, getting beat up, I think that is a possibility. Not not dying, you know, not. I do not think for a second that Killua can die at this point, you know, um, no, not not one bit. But you know, maybe he can get beat up. And maybe, you know, he's not able to break free, right? I mean, listen, you know, I, I don't expect it to be easy for him to break free all of a sudden. Yes, yes, you know, the stakes are as high as they could be, right? His best friend's life is on the line, right? In his mind, his in his mind, if Ramon gets past him, eh, he believes that Gon is going to die. Now, again, you know, I, I spoke of Palm. That's a bit of the unknown, right? you know palm palm could actually do something here who knows you know could, this could be the moment palm actually finally gets to flex a bit to protect uh her date <laughs> uh, yeah more on that later um yeah you know i think it, it's a possibility but you know again if if ramut is to beat kilua uh and just beat him to a pulp and all of that you know i could see something like him kind of dragging kilua's body right uh beating a body um, tracking down Gon and then, you know, like trying to get a reaction out of Gon uh, by kind of displaying Killua's body. But then, of course, at that point, maybe Palm can kind of step in, right? It could be, it could be cool. It could be cool if it does kind of play out like that. Uh, it could be a big moment for uh, Palm. And, you know, the thing I really like about this is that, you know, there's this intrigue, right? This mystery. I'm not even sure what, you know, him breaking free looks like, you know? Because again, you know, there's that unknown of, um, you know, the programming, the manipulation, the stranglehold, right? Uh, just the, just the, you know, the, at the basic level, how exactly is Lumi having this kind of a hold on him? You know, like the actual mechanics of it. So yeah, you know, this definitive encounter certainly promises to be quite the, um, you know, possible monumental moment depending on how it kind of plays out. Either way, right? Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Of course, I'm really quite excited. You know, the thing is, he Kilua certainly wants to leave them out of this, both Palm and Gon, right? Palm because of her potential reaction and Gon because, you know, he knows how Gon is and how he'll, he might lash out, possibly. And again, you know, Gon doesn't have Nen. Uh, but, you know, listen, Gon still has his uh, innate skills, Stuff that's been built in, you know, again, you, you see a lot of that before he actually kind of, you know, has Nen, you know, the Hunter exam arc. You, you get to see him really kind of utilize some of these things that he just kind of developed, uh, at, you know, in his hometown, essentially, you know, living a really specific type of lifestyle, right? Um, you know, his tracking skills, um, his, you know, his incredible sense of smell. You know, the thing is, I actually think he might know that Killua is tailing him. And then, of course, a little bit earlier, it's also possible that he knew that's Palm standing right there, or that she's close by, right? But he kind of played along, right, to kind of give her that really incredible reaction, really lovely reaction. And, you know, I'll come back to this in a bit. Uh, but, you know, I kind of want to touch up really quickly on just Gon's composure, right? I mean, it's really damn impressive. Uh, it's, it's All of it is just so impressive how effectively he's able to calm Palm down, right? I mean, you know, uh, of course, first of all, he is legitimately upset or legitimately, um, I don't know, uh, disappointed that he wasn't able to keep up uh, his promise, right? Uh, the pinky promise <laughs> at that, right? Sealed with a kiss. Um, so, you know, of course, at that point for Gon, it's all about, okay, how can I, uh, you know, make things right? 
and he legitimately wants to make things right. You know, it's not it's not really a case of, oh, I need to get her off of my back. Uh, you know, maybe Killua, you know, Killua is maybe looking at it in that capacity. You know, let's, you know, let's create some distance here. Let's get out of here, get her off of our back. But, you know, Gon is kind of uh, facing it head on. I mean, you know, so is Killua, um, you know, uh, but ultimately the promise is made with Gon. One thing that's been clear since day one, episode one, is that he's a people person. He simply is. People gravitate uh, to Gon. Um, and, you know, he knows how to, how to you know, treat people, how to handle people. Uh, and yeah, you know, I, I was really quite impressed, uh, you know, with how um, compassionate he was as well. Uh, listen, I know, I know, you know, uh, you, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not skipping it. I'll get to it. Of course, there's the other angle to this, the the really uncomfortable side to this uh, whole thing. You know, the fact that there is a date in the first place, given, you know, the age gap. Uh, and, I'll, you know, of course, I'll give my thoughts on that. But, you know, it, that doesn't change the fact that the things that do kind of play out, I'm just kind of looking at it and, you know, giving my thoughts on it. It's, it's full of compassion, in my opinion, at least, you know. Um, gone, he's kind of all in. He's legitimately hoping that she has a good time. Actually, let's just kind of focus on it since I am on this uh, talking point already. You know, let's put it up front, okay? It is concerning. It is um, really uncomfortable that this is a thing that's happening and, you know, that she's the one asking for this, right? Requesting this. I mean, it's not really a request. It's more of like a, I don't know, ultimatum, bit of a demand. Though, of course, you know, gone allowed it. He's completely open to uh, any request or any one thing that she she wanted out of this. And he immediately accepted it, right? Again, uh, you know, he felt bad about all of this, that he wasn't able to keep his promise. Um, you know, Killua, of course, is... You know, he's a little bit concerned about all of this. You know, he thinks Gon's a little bit crazy for accepting so, you know, quickly. But yeah, it's 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 in Gon's nature, right, to make things right in this case. But yeah, you know, let's 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 be clear about it. You know, uh, it's it's it is strange. It's it's really strange. Um, and it's not the first time that Tagashi's, uh, you know, flirted with this notion, this idea. Right. Like I said, you know, he's not afraid to. I don't know. Um, make people uncomfortable. He's done it on many occasions already in this anime, you know. And then, of course, a little bit later on, you find out about Gon's experiences as a younger uh, person, as a younger child, even. You know, it, that was years ago, uh, back on his island, right? He spoke of going on dates with Mito-san, right? That's of course uh, cute. But then, you know, there's others. You know, Killua brings a hold up. There's others. Like, who are the others? Uh, you know, he called them fanatics, but it essentially sounded like cougars. Right? mature um that are into younger men again again you know Tagashi's not afraid to uh, kind of come up with these types of scenarios because you know this is not just a younger man right this is a child and of course it's all really quite deliberate you know the notion of oh yeah you know I I kind of used to take them around the the island and they used to teach me things right you see that Killua is certainly thinking of that really specific thing right oh he's a grown-up Right, that's his reaction. That's his uh, immediate reaction to this. Oh, oh my God! This, I mean, this dude knows so much more than me in this uh, department, right? I mean, I, I, you see, at that point, he's feeling really quite—I uh, don't know—quite young all of a sudden, quite inexperienced all of a sudden. But you know, he's quite defiant in terms of no. Of course, I haven't been on a date. Right. Because, again, he doesn't really deem it, uh, I don't know, normal. I mean, again, Killua comes from <laughs> quite a, you know, uh, quite a strange or quite a unique uh, background anyways. But, yeah, you know, just looking at those ages. Um, yeah, you know, to Killua at that point, you know, Gon appeared to be this really confident, um, almost grown up. Right. That he's got a bit of knowledge, quite a bit of knowledge in terms of, you know, I don't know, handling people. Now, just to kind of go back and make it clear, I, I don't think, I don't think, you know, the implication here is that, okay, he's actually done stuff, right, that he, I mean, done stuff, it'd be abuse, essentially, right? Uh, I don't think that's the case here, even though, again, you know, Togashi is kind of pushing it, you know, he's really quite deliberate with uh, the delivery of it, and I mean, again, you see Killua's reaction to it, right? Um, in his position, yeah, you know, that is a reaction he can have, right? He doesn't know for sure. Right. But again, you know, my stance is that, no, he doesn't he doesn't know those things. Right. Um, and I think I think the, the date itself actually kind of um, showcases this as well. I think it's more of a wholesome, um, 
depiction of a date. Uh, you know, I really don't think that, you know, Palm had any ideas or notions of, uh, you know, it becoming really inappropriate, right? Now, I know, I know, you know, just the fact that it's a date in the first place is highly inappropriate, right? Uh, and Takashi put it in there, right? It's in there. It's it's there to elicit this, uh, you know, reaction, this response. But then beyond that, there is still much to explore, right? In terms of, um, you know, Palm's mental state her character as a whole. And then, of course, Gon's approach, his compassionate approach. I feel like, you know, just leaving it at that is essentially leaving too much on the table in terms of, um, you know, potential um, analysis. Now, you know, I have explored uh, Palm's character a bit around the time I, I saw her for the first time and, you know, kind of gave my, uh, you know, uh, initial thoughts. And, you know, it's kind of played out in that capacity since. And now, of course, you know, this happened. Um, you know, I can kind of apply a lot of those thoughts to this as well. And maybe I'll be proven wrong uh, because the date itself hasn't finished yet, right? It'll continue into the next episode. But I think that, you know, Palm is more so about the emotional component of the date, right? And then you see that it's really quite similar. I think both of their uh, understandings of a date are really quite similar. Um, and, you know, it kind of it kind of gives you this idea of, OK, these are the types of dates that Gone used to kind of go on. Right. Be it Mito-san, be it uh, some of these ladies, the cougars and all of that. You know, this is his experience and he's applying it. Right. And it's really quite wholesome. The actual date itself or the things, the activities that they are kind of taking part in. Right. And I say that she's drawn to the emotional component of this is because, listen, you know, they've made it really quite clear. And I spoke of the first appearance that this is not a person that is um, used to this, right? Or that's had many nice things happen to them, really, right? That's, again, that's my first, um, I don't know, thought on her. You know, it, it really appeared that she hasn't been the luckiest in terms of, you know, connection and, you know, friendship. Um, she's different. She is. And, you know, sure, there's a possibility, I mean, maybe, maybe a strong possibility that there's something um, of a condition uh, that's a part of this, right? It's a possibility, of course. Um, you know, like many others, like most others, I'm sure I'll be getting quite a, um, quite a fantastic character arc for Palm as well. And then, of course, on the other end, in Gone, you have essentially one of the most personable and kind-hearted people, right, of this anime. Um, of this cast. I mean, yes, Gon has other, you know, issues, other sides to him as well, right? And I've seen glimpses of it, and I certainly have quite a bit of concern um, uh, in terms of how he'll be reacting soon enough because, you know, they brought up, they brought up, uh, you know, Kite. He now knows or he thinks that Kite is good. He's back, you know. Um, yes, you know, he's kind of accepted that, okay, maybe he is being controlled by the enemy, but at least they've secured him. And, you know, that's that's a, that's an interesting question to, to kind of think about as well, isn't it? How exactly did they secure him? Kite, that is. Um, you know, could, could it be uh, maybe, uh, I mean, of course, you know, they kind of teamed up there. Uh, but, you know, maybe it could be Shoot's, um, Shoot's uh, ability. You know, maybe maybe that cage came into play. I don't know. I mean, sure, it's possible that Knuckle bankrupted them as well, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, again, the thing is, he he's a puppet. He's simply a puppet, right? Reanimated puppet. So it's not it's not really Kite's Hatsu. Sorry, it's not, his, it's not his Nen anymore, is it? Right? I mean, yes, you know, there's that notion of residual Nen. But again, this is this is just not the same person. It, it simply isn't. And again, Nefropito knows this as well. But you know, it is Nefropito's Hatsu or her Nen or her ability rather that is in control, right? So yeah, you know, interesting to kind of think about. But yeah, you know, now I'm thinking about uh, you know Gon's initial reaction to seeing that that kite, right? Kiluas as well. You know, it's it's going to hit him hard as well. Because as of this point, you know, he's just kind of overheard that, okay, yeah, you know, Kite's good. They've secured him. Maybe he might be under control, the, uh, under the enemy's control. But yeah, they've ha they have him. So even Killua doesn't have a clue about his actual state at this point. I mean, hell, they don't even know that he died. I feel that even though initially it might be a bit of a shock for Gon, I think his stubbornness is going to continue. I think he'll be, he'll, he'll still be kind of dead set on, okay, 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 that's fine. 
let's you know let's kind of continue and let's try to free him let's kind of try to bring him back i, I feel like that's how gone is going to react to this at no point is he going to just kind of you know give up or back down and, and then of course if that is the case that is inevitably going to bring him across nefropito at some point down the line i mean it's all really quite concerning in terms of you know gone's mental uh mental state right once all of these things kind of come into play and then, you know, once he tries to push it as far as he can to, you know, rescue Kite somehow, you know, kind of kind of change him somehow. Um, yeah, you know, I've spoken of this, my concern of this. Let's see. But yeah, you know, going back to my point about Gon being one of the most kind hearted and personal people in this anime, in this story, you know, he simply has that heart of gold, right? And that heart of gold has its own kind of draw, its own kind of gravitational pull. Right. And that is that is the hole. That's the pull that Killua has certainly felt quite a bit. I mean, you know, at one point, you know, he's kind of brainstorming. He's kind of thinking about the potential game plan. If indeed, you know, uh, they find themselves too close to some of these uh, chimera ants that have been reported at this point on, on the news. Right. And, you know, quickly, how about the how about the newscaster or the, the reporter? That's such a cool look. It's not that generic, uh, simple suit, uh, clean cut look. You know, she's really kind of expressing herself through her appearance and her, uh, you know, wardrobe. I really like that, uh, you know, for them to change it up like that. But, yeah, you know, the news is broken now. You know, I've seen two of them. I've seen Ramut. I've seen Chitu. Uh, and, you know, they even said in that report that, okay, you know, the the request was made of the the Hunter Association to, you know, to handle this and that they accepted it. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to see uh, the Hunter Association or, you know, someone or a few of them from the Hunter Association tackle this, uh, you know, uh, go after Chitu um, because that's the one that's been reported, um, you know, in that local news. Um, and yeah. <laughs> You know, before I kind of forget, you know, just the scene of him strolling in and at first kind of appearing to be this really fashionable, um, I don't know, person. You know, I, I don't even think at first people realize this is not this is not a human. But yeah, you know, going back to kill contemplating strategies, uh, just in case, you know, they are kind of overrun. You know, he, he to, he's made it pretty clear to himself. He's open to sacrificing everything, everything just to make sure that gone is safe to safely get gone out of there, right? I mean, you know, just in like a hypothetical, good luck trying to convince gone that no, you know, let's, I have to get you out of here as people are dying. But guess what? Killua is open to that, right? That's how much gone means to him. That's that's how much he, he just needs to, and he wants to protect gone in these 30 days. So other humans getting targeted by some of these chimera ants is deemed uh, an escape opportunity in Killua's mind, if, if it comes to that. You know, before any of that really kind of uh, takes place, he's picked up uh, Ramot's, uh, you know, aura, right? And of course, by the end of it, he's come face to face with Ramot. And then of course, you know, this idea of, you know, I must protect him, uh, even if it means sacrificing everything else. Yeah, it's going to continue now, now that this fight is about to take place, right? It, you know, of course, uh, it's about to be kind of similar to the shoot encounter in the sense that, okay, he's about to fight two battles, right? One that's in front of him, the physical battle in Ramot, um, who is probably going to rough him up quite a bit, uh, you know, uh, at, least in, in, at least in the beginning stages. And then, of course, the titanic internal struggle, uh, you know, with Illumi's programming and manipulation and all of that. I mean, listen, you know, like I said, it's this, it's this toxic type of love. Right, Illumi's brand of love in that in that sense, or in that case rather. But let's kind of explore this idea of you know most of these um, Chimera ants doing their own thing now, right? The mass exodus in the last episode, um, and yeah, you know they've shown me certainly a few of them out and about at this point. But you know just because they're out and about doesn't mean that you know that that all of it has to kind of go uh, and, and play out in a similar fashion, you know. Colt, uh, yeah, Colt is kind of one of a kind, um, but, you know, he's kind of able to switch sides 
right? He's open to switching sides. Uh, and then, you know, there's a few others as well that are, you know, uh, loyal to the queen right till the end. Um, Behorn uh, is one of them, the panda that explained some of the, you know, the human tendencies and um, character kind of leaking through as well, that it's it's a part of their buildup. And then, of course, let's not forget that the pink koala is also in the nest at that point, right? So I certainly hope I get to hear from him. Um, you know, soon because it's been a long time. And, you know, to see him make that choice, it's it's really quite an interesting one, isn't it? Given how he was introduced. Hopefully I get to see him soon enough. Uh, but yeah, you know, there, there's always a possibility that, you know, maybe more of them could possibly, um, you know, join Colt. But, you know, the thing that, that's a little bit interesting is a little bit earlier on. And of course, you know, I haven't said anything about it just yet because I've got a full, full section for it. And I'm speaking of the opening, you know, the king and the king's guards and all of that. You know, at one point, Nefropito um, mentioned our soldiers. Soldiers? I mean, at this point, it's just them. You know, are they... Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's as simple as okay, yeah, she is speaking of the Chimera ants. Um, I mean, some of them or many of them, but you know, they also showed me that most of them left. The majority of them actually left, right? And then there's a few that are still loyal to the queen. So these soldiers, who the hell is she speaking of? I mean, perhaps these are soldiers that don't exist yet. I mean, I don't know, you know, part of me does kind of feel like maybe I'm missing something that's right in front of me, you know, maybe like a brain fart moment. It happens, it happens, it happens to me. But yeah, let's kind of focus on that component of this episode, the, you know, the opening uh, part of it. Uh, and that's the king and the king's guards coming across this place and this head of state, this supreme leader, right? <laughs> I mean, I think it's kind of clear. They've made it clear enough that, okay, this is kind of like a take on um, North Korea, perhaps. Right, because the the man himself, Masador Diego, uh, not Diego, uh, he said Diego, Diego. Um, yeah, this looks like Kim Jong Il, and even though this head of state is kind of presented as this, I don't know, bozo of a person, you know, his inclusion is actually really fantastic because the, it's that inclusion, right, that run in that experience that gave me this really fantastic bit of insight, right the opening moments of trying to get to know this king, try to kind of get into his headspace. Uh, and yeah, it's exciting. You know, it's 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 a taste of it. I mean, they've certainly made it quite clear that, you know, Meduem, the king, is not a fan of nepotism. He's not a fan of, um, you know, people kind of, you know, finding themselves in these positions, right? high-ranking positions, the position of, you know, head of state, uh, a king, uh, through connections and bloodlines, and not through merit. And that's just a really foreign idea, really foreign notion to the king. Um, and, you know, I mean, he said it himself, that defies all logic. It, it just does not compute. It makes no sense to him, right? Because he comes from a, a totally different type of structure. I mean, look, in a sense, the king is also born into it, right? He, it's as simple as that. He was born to be the king. You know, someone like Ramot had his place in all of this and he understood. He certainly understood um, <laughs> at a certain point. And then, of course, there's uh, a really specific place for this individual as well. Meduem, the king, right? He was born for it. Uh, and the, the difference is, even though he was born into this position, you know, he's been born qualified to lead, right? It's all by design. By structure, I mean, Meruem is essentially the pinnacle of all of this, right? Yes, he didn't have to do anything to kind of climb the ladder and take this position, but, but you know, he was made for it. He was made for it, you know, day one. Before day one, that was always going to be his role, right? He's got it in him to lead. He's got it in him to, uh, you know, provide guidance. And as Meruem stated, you know, in the hands of an incompetent, power brings nothing but ruin, right? Um, wow, wow. I mean, you know, that was that was really an exciting component of this episode to finally get that about the king. I mean, listen, it's only been a few episodes since the king showed up. But, you know, uh, I, I've been kind of, you know, looking for this to finally kind of get into this, right? Uh, you know, since the beginning, since the beginning, I, I, I've just known that it's not going to be the type of character that's, you know, going to remain um, exactly the way I see him at first. Um, because if that's the case, that's not going to be the greatest character. 
right? It's essentially just going to be um, really a surface level um, antagonist. And I, I just don't think that's that's the case here in Togashi's writing. I've seen enough of it to know it's that was never going to be the case, right? Um, but listen, you know, I'm not saying that at this point he's some completely changed individual. I'm just kind of looking ahead. You know, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at the roadmap and my expectations of a character of this caliber, right? The arrival, it's it's a big one. It, the, the lead up to it was uh, really quite a monumental uh, lead up, right? The introduction of the king is a monumental moment, Meduem. Um, so yeah, I'm expecting big things. As of this point, you know, it is really quite a strength focused philosophy, isn't it? Might makes right. Um, and he's at the top of the food chain, right? <laughs> He is most definitely at the top of that ladder. You know, at this point, it certainly feels like, um, you know, he believes that physical strength is the pinnacle of achievement, right? I almost said human achievement, but, you know, this is chimera ants. So in, I think in his mind, as of this point, at least, it's all about, you know, ruling with strength. But yeah, I'm really quite excited to experience, um, you know, the progression of the king's, uh, you know, philosophical reflections, right? Uh, and just the progression of his philosophy, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, throughout his arc and by the end of his arc. And, you know, the crazy thing about this is that even though I, I just mentioned that, you know, the king is the pinnacle and he's the top of the food chain, the top of the ladder, it's a constant um, process because, uh, you know, a bit of a bombshell moment, I get to kind of experience his ability that is kind of only unique to him. I mean, essentially, there is going to be constant growth from this point on as well. Uh, as Nefropito noted, right, the more he eats, the more you know powerful he gets. So if it wasn't already enough that okay, this is the most formidable of opponents that you know anyone's ever seen in recent memory, at least, uh, and it's one of the things that's got the the chairman quite excited. You know, the challenge of it, he's going to be you know going to the next level continuously. And to kind of go back to Nefropito, she said that he can take aura from the rare humans he consumes. Right. So that is fucking insane, <laughs> you know, and isn't it crazy just how feral he becomes, right? Uh, how bloodthirsty, how devilish he becomes as he comes in contact with uh, aura, right? A rare human's aura as it integrates into his system, right? He just, oh my God, he he's almost kind of like a junkie in a sense, right? Um, you know, he mentioned that he, it's something he remembers quite a bit. Even even before he was born, right? He he developed a, a liking to it, a taste for it. So now, anytime he gets in contact, anytime um, he comes across a rare human, you know, he came across his first one in in this um you know in this episode, you see it, it gets quite a bit of a reaction out of him. So not only does he resemble characters like Cell and Frieza as well, you know, even the ability itself is quite similar to Cell's. Now, from the looks of it, it's not really like Krollo's ability, right? He can kind of take anyone's ability. Um, this is more so about just taking that aura and that becoming a part of his build and then playing a part in making him stronger, right? Getting to the next level. Uh, now, imagine uh, imagine once he does, you know, inevitably come across some of these other Nen users, rare humans, the ones that are, you know, meant to be on the case and all of that. You know, you've got, again, uh, Nov, Moral, uh, Knuckle, Shoot. You've got the chairman. Holy shit. Imagine, imagine that encounter. Imagine that. Whoa. It's, I mean, of course it's going to happen, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just really quite excited to see uh, both of their reactions to each other. You know, but it's certainly quite clear that he has a clear cut understanding of, you know, what it takes to be a king, to be the king and who should qualify for that title, for that responsibility. Certainly not this uh, Masador Diego. Right. Um, he, you know, he immediately saw him and, and said something like, oh, you know, I sense nothing uh, useless. But yeah, you know, I've got to say, I'm really, really quite excited for, um, you know, this character arc, Meruem's character arc uh, as a king as well. Um, and, you know, I, I just love this. Um, I, I love the idea of philosopher kings. So I've got this, you know, I've got this, I don't know, almost a roadmap that I'm kind of hoping for even right? Uh, in terms of the type of king he ends up becoming, the type of king he could be capable of becoming, you know, this idea of, uh, you know, a dual-natured ruler, 
right? The bold, adventurous spirit of a great king combined with the self-restrained, um, thoughtful temperament of a philosopher. So, you know, really early on in this arc, uh, you know, perhaps in the first few episodes, I believe, you know, I mentioned this idea of humanity, um, you know, kind of having a mirror held against them or uh, in front of them, rather, uh, and really kind of having to face their own nature, human nature. And, you know, this is it. This is like uh, the pinnacle of it in the Chimera Ants and the pinnacle of the Chimera Ants in Meruem, right? The king. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's something that really cuts deep here, doesn't it? You know, he tells them, you know, try to think. Try to think in your in your pea-sized brain, I suppose. You know, that's the, that's the idea here, right? Um, you know, have you ever spared a pig or a cow as it, as it begged for its life, right? Yeah, it's going there. It's going there now, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, essentially it's all about the, the food chain. Uh, you know, humans at this point, um, certainly the ones in that, you know, um, castle or palace, um, they find themselves on a really specific rung of the ladder now. You know, there's terms like uh, human meat plantation um, or human plantation. Uh, meat, yeah, meat plantation. I think, yeah, that's the term he used. But of course, it's human meat plantation, right? And it's just really quite casual, isn't it? You see that for these chimera ants, right? Uh, humans at this point are livestock, right? <laughs> and it's 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 got to be quite the, uh, I don't know, quite the jarring experience uh, to, to find yourself in that position. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is just kind of, I don't know, uh, you know, kind of normal in the sense that, okay, you know, through rapid progression and evolution, this is kind of like the new hierarchy. This is the food chain now. The chimera ants find themselves at top. And, you know, at the top kind of used to be humans, right? And now you've got, you know, the king of the chimera ants kind of, you know, looking at humans in that capacity now, right? This is in his mind and also, you know, Nefropito's mind and the, and the other two as well, you know, Humans are a source, essentially, at this point. Uh, but, you know, uh, the early days, um, you know, even though I got quite a bit of uh, fantastic insight on Meduem, uh, it's still early days. You know, he's going to have more experiences, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, it remains to be seen if there's others in this um, uh, in this palace. Um, it's, it's a big palace, big palace. So hopefully there's other interesting people around and about. You know, once they kind of get around to the different uh, areas of um, the palace itself. But yeah, you know, I think it's also a bit of commentary on animal cruelty, isn't it? Right? Uh, listen, I can only speak for myself, but as I, as I kind of experienced that moment of him asking that question um, and just kind of, you know, experiencing this new, um, you know, um, food chain ladder, essentially, you know, I was thinking about the treatment of animals. I mean, yes, it's a circle of life and all of that, right? Necessity, the food chain, but you you, you simply kind of have to think about the cruel practices. Um, you know, livestock forcibly, um, you know, taken to slaughterhouses, right? Often killed in really excruciatingly painful uh, ways, right? Because a lot of times, you know, the killings are botched. You think of the forced feeding and the forced fasting, right? Uh, you think of the inhumane transportation. So yeah, you know, much to you know, much to think about here uh, for both us, the audience, and the characters, the human characters um, of this story arc, right? Um, I mean, you know, at this point, it just happens to be these really, I don't know, innocent young girls that are on the you know the receiving end of this. But ultimately, you know, the Chimera ant, uh, it's a species that continuously evolves, right? And it's beautifully showcased, I think. Uh, once again, through the king's ability. But yeah, I think I'll end it off there. If you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like, consider dropping some comments, give me your thoughts. If you are interested in early access or timer-based full length or full opacity, consider checking out the Patreon page and you know potentially supporting the channel in the process as well. Links are in the description and the pinned comments, also links to social media if that's your thing. Right then, thank you so much for joining me, folks, and thank you for your time because time is precious. It really is. And I do hope to see you again soon for episode 94. Until then, take it easy. Thank <laughs> you.